What's going on guys? I'm titled this video, I'm done trying to fight the system. And I say that because the last year or so, I had gotten out of the military. I think it was last July, right? And I got a long story about that, but I'll shorten it up because I'm not as sour about it, I'm not angry anymore. It is what it is. And then also, I had a good talk with a friend who told me just to stop, stop being a baby about it. Like, we can't change anything about it until we use that number two amendment that we got in the Constitution and then we see people take back the government. Unless that day comes, I don't know, man. I'm not going to try to fight it. It is what it is. Um, same with everyone just deciding not to pay taxes. I think that's crazy. I don't think everybody's going to do it. I've seen it with my own eyes. If you try to get everybody on the same page, it just will not happen. There's always going to be one or two that will not do it. But who knows? Who knows what could happen if just 10% of us, just 5% of us don't pay our taxes? Who knows? Um, <laughs> but going back last July, all right, hear me out. I joined the military. I think it's super cool. I get to be somebody who is supporting the country, fighting for our freedoms, right? But then I get in and I realize we don't really do much. Everything is kind of like communism because they give it to us for free. We are paying for it, yes, but the tax dollars from United States citizens are paying for my paycheck as a person in the Navy. I get in, I get all my uniforms, all my health care, all my food, my sleeping arrangement, everything's taken care of. It's like welfare, right? But it's uh, it's probably not as fun as the welfare that the people down in Portland or Seattle up the road, uh, not the kind of welfare that they get to have smoking their joints in their tent. Like we're talking, you're doing push-ups, you gotta do things like clean, you know, but you're doing a half-ass job, right? A lot of people don't really care. And when I get into the actual command that I'm at, you know, it is it is what it is, it's like a job. I start to get some freedom, but I'm not really happy with it. I'm not happy with what I'm supporting because in my mind, deep in my mind, I know that what I'm doing is not doing anything for the citizens of the country, for defending the freedom of my country. And maybe in a time of war, theoretically, I'm playing a role in that, but a small percentage of that. Because then you think, what is this war for? Or why would we go to war? What kinds of wars would I be fighting? Who are the wars directly benefiting? You start asking those questions and it'll lead you down a path where you're just not really stoked to get up in the morning, lace up the boots and put on the uniform. And so, as you would imagine, I started to show up late. I started to not care. I started to lose hope. And this is all after I bought a house. I bought a sports car. I had two little kitty cats. I was doing DIY projects, things to make me happy. I got my real estate license here in Washington. Like I was doing so many things outside of the Navy because I just didn't find any fulfillment, like zero, absolutely none in the Navy or the military in general. Because when I joined, I thought it was actually gonna be cool. I thought it was gonna be something I believed in and would be proud to be a part of. I have a lot of family in the military. And I think a lot of people are also kind of feeling the same way I am now in the same way that I did when I was getting out of the Navy. I don't think it's too uncommon now. Because I remember getting out, talking about it to other people, and they'd be, oh yeah, you know, I feel that way too. But then they would just show up to work the next day, you know, with their Starbucks, whatever. Uh, yeah, I'm ready for the day, meh. It's like, how are you gonna just show up and, and, and not say anything? If you really feel the way I felt, if you really don't care uh, for the way the military is ran and what you're doing for your job and how you don't really contribute anything to the country in, in some sense, how can you just show up and just take it day by day? Only five more years until I get retirement for the rest of my life. It's just mind boggling. Because to me, it's once I notice something that isn't right, I wanna change it. Not for just me, but in general. If something's messed up, let's just agree to change it. Like all of us together. I don't wanna control the military. It's not at all what I propose. But the idea that someone isn't open to change or just saying, you know what? Let's rebel just a little bit. Let's just see what we could change. I don't know the answer, but I know it's messed up. But I'm also not gonna come to work tomorrow and just, eh, I'll get retirement out of this, so it'll be fine. Getting back to the point, I started being late. I started just being rebellious up into a point where I wouldn't be in trouble or disobeying the UCMJ, if you're familiar with that, the Uniform Code of Military Justice. I, I started to disobey a little bit, but not get in trouble. But I also was not listening to them. I, I rode this very fine line where it's like, 
If you're going to kick me out, kick me out. And uh, I'll be happy with that. Just don't give me a dishonorable discharge because dishonorable discharge is for people who got charged with like murder or something like an actual crime. Me, I just got, I don't know what you'd call it. I was brainwashed into thinking that I should kiss the ground that veterans walk on. And then I joined and then I was disenfranchised with it all. I did not like the way our leadership was doing things in general in, for our whole country, right? I don't want to support any war that they were going to go and start. And we weren't in a war, but they were telling us, hey, prepare to go to war with China, right? And I would be getting out in like 2025, 2026. I just could not imagine staying in that long and being a part of that. So just because I disagreed with it, I didn't think I deserved dishonorable discharge. So I was willing to ride that line and just show up late consistently. And it's not like I tried to, it was pretty natural. When you feel so depressed, like you have no hope for anything. I already bought a house. I was married. I was doing what I could do to make myself happy. Like I said, I, I felt like I had everything, but I had nothing. None of it mattered because each day I was forced to show up, wear this costume. It was really natural just to wake up late, feeling terrible, feeling depressed and just not caring. And you know what? <laughs> like I've never felt that way in my life. It was crazy. I just suddenly felt like a wall had hit me and I was just heavy. Um, so yeah, I would wake up, get some coffee in the morning, take my time, go outside, start my Porsche up because I drove a Porsche Boxer at the time. I love cars and make me really happy to go out and drive and work on them. But like nothing, like none of it mattered, dude. So I just started fighting the system and you know what? Man, they got me good. So I started getting written up. I still have all the papers in my files. Started getting written up. I started to uh, just say, yeah, like, I don't care. I, just kick me out. Every time they would threaten me, somebody would say, I don't care. Kick me out. And uh, granted, personally, those people did not deserve how I treated them and how I talked to them because they had families. They were moms and dads, right? But I didn't see them that way. They were against me because they were in the uniform. They were unwilling to let me out. All this works because we have people talking to people and communicating via bureaucratic paperwork. That's the way that I saw it. And maybe that wasn't the way it actually worked. But to me, I was pretty darn pissed off about the whole situation about, well, we can't just let you go. Because the reality of it is it would look bad in some officer's paperwork that he has one less sailor in his control because that sailor was so unruly, they had to kick him out. It looks bad on the people who are supposed to be leading the military if somebody gets out. So when you have people who are just one rank above me who are telling me to do something and I'm rebelling, yes, I feel bad personally. Like, hey, I, you're probably a cool guy out of uniform, but you're in uniform and you're telling me to do something. I'm telling you I'm not gonna do it respectfully. But then you still want to just say, I'm a rank above you or I'm two ranks above you. It's like, dude, I don't care. <laughs> so like, if I were to see these people now, I would still greet them with a handshake, be respectful. But like at the time, it's like, no, I'm not gonna just be nice to you. Like you're against me. And so eventually they got all pretty mad at me. They all got pretty mad at me. They ended up sending me to captain's mast. The captain's mast, if you don't know what it is, you gotta put on your dress outfit. It's, I'll post a picture of it right here, wherever on the screen. You, you get dressed up in your dress uniform. You get a nice haircut, you know, and the person who leads your command acts as the judge if you were going to court and, and you're comparing the two. It's just like court, except one person and one person only just gets to make a decision, boom, there it is. And the Uniform Code of Military Justice is very loosely written and there's a lot more things they can do to you to punish you compared to like the normal justice system. So what he did was he gave me the maximum punishment, <laughs> the absolute maximum, even though I claim like, look, I'm depressed, I can't take this anymore. I want to run away. I want to do whatever I can to get out. And I have no options. Like, I don't want to kill myself. That's dumb. I have a whole life to live. But damn it, I really feel like it. That's how I feel in my head. And he's like, all right, cool. Like, I understand. Uh, it's going to be the maximum punishment. We're going to keep you on restriction for 45 days. We're going to have 45 days extra duty for you. Um, we're also going to take two months pay. Uh, half months pay times two is what he called it. Um, and then... Shoot, what was the other thing they did? But 
essentially what that meant was no more going home. I was a homeowner. I had a tenant at the time. I couldn't take care of those things. I couldn't go see my wife, which she was kind of useless at that point because she'd given up all hope on supporting her husband because things got hard. That's all right. She's a good person, but it doesn't change what happened. Couldn't see the cats, you know, my poor little kitty cats, you know. I couldn't drive my, my Porsche anymore. Um, any little sense of freedom I had left, it was gone. It just vanished it, poof. I was now wearing the uniform 24 seven. I couldn't wear any normal clothes. And it, like, it's not that bad. Like just people in third world countries right now without food and water, like I was taken care of, but it was boring, man. I mean, you couldn't have technology, so no phones, no, no computers, nothing. And you had to show up and report to this office five times a day because they didn't want you running away. You had to stay on the base at all times. So as much as I wanted to get away from it, now I was surrounded by it 24 seven. But I had my laptop in my car. I uh, brought it in, supposedly. I don't know if I can still be charged if I were to say I violated those orders. Okay, between you and me, I still have my laptop in the car. So I went out, I still have my car keys and I uh, just take my laptop out, go inside my room. Um, and I was, they were giving me a room on base to stay in for the 45 days. It just felt like forever, man. I was eating the shitty food that they serve at the galley. Normally I eat all the organic food, all the food that's good for me because I know most of the food here in America is poison. If you guys don't know that, you should uh, look into what you're eating. So yeah. I was sitting in this room, in this concrete room. I could only have my uniform on. I'd always have to have my room clean. It's like they were they were making a statement to the whole command. Like if you try to disobey the military, you will be punished. And they used me as an example because I was starting to convince other people to be on my side. Like, look, you can get out. You can go be a conscientious objector. You could just stop showing up. If we just stop doing what they say, what are they going to do? I was I was mad. I, just, I felt like I didn't have anything to lose. But I did have something to lose. And I realized that once they put me on restriction. And I just remember being so bitter and angry every damn day. So, yeah, that's what happens when you try to buck the system when you're in the military. And I learned that the hard way. But I wouldn't change anything because now that I'm out, I feel much better. I'm happier. I have a job I actually care about. I have a job that I feel like contributes positively to something and I have freedom again. I'm not in the military. I don't have duty. I don't have these things that are all for a bureaucratic process. It's just soul sucking to me. It was just soul sucking. I couldn't just show up and pretend everything was going to be okay if I just did these things they asked me to. Um, inside, I was just dead. But now, I'm a little less dead. I'm just a normal debt slave. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Am I though? So... That's what happened. And then eventually I uh, got out of the military. Um, they let me out. I got a normal discharge, a general under honorable conditions. They didn't give me an honorable because I wasn't in for my full contract, whatever. But technically I should have got one because I never committed a crime. Technically, um, all they did was punish me because I was late a few times, but it doesn't constitute an actual crime. Uh, but they were not not allowed to give me a less than honorable. So if that makes sense. They give me a less desirable exit paperwork packet, if that makes sense, uh, because they could, not because they were like obliged to give me the honorable. Because the people who have power, uh, they don't necessarily care about you the same way that you care about you. Um, they're just doing their job based on the bureaucratic process available. And uh, it's not personal. So commander, if you're watching this, Sorry for the trouble. I bet you're a cool guy outside the Navy, but if you're also just doing your job and you're not really doing anything to change anything in the government when most of the citizens in this country are pretty mad at the government and you work in the government, you should be trying your best to, I don't know, be a public servant like you're supposed to, but we're not public servants in the military. We're government servants. So it leads me to a whole other problem, dude. Oh, okay. So again, why this doesn't matter. For me to be all upset and butthurt about this whole deal would be stopping me from moving forward in my life. It would be stopping me from doing anything ever that's significant. Because the reality is, it doesn't matter. Those people have long moved on. 
and I should have too. But it did simmer in me for a few months, and on top of that, it did really bring in the <laughs> the era of divorce in my life, and it really made my now ex-wife uncomfortable. Um, but I don't think we had very comparable values to begin with looking back. But that's okay. Um, she's all right, I'm all right, and no hard feelings. But after that, this is when it gets crazy because I was still simmering, I'm still a little angry, and now everyone with a badge was starting to piss me off a little bit. So I hadn't gotten a speeding ticket again until recently, but yeah, I'm done paying extra taxes. I'll pay a lawyer uh, because it's really just a privilege. If you want to speed, you have to have money, and it's a sad reality, but it's not that I have money. It's just the fact that I'm also not going to pay extra taxes or have to pay extra insurance because I was driving my car in a safe manner where I wasn't hurting anybody. There was no crime committed because there was no damage to property, no injury, but you have to pay extra money because they pulled you over and you allegedly committed a crime. But a crime against an idea is not a crime in the Constitution. So just stuff like that. You know, it starts to you know, plant seeds in your mind. Um, you know, the one time I went through the Border Patrol checkpoints, um, well, it was a couple times, but when I was in the area of West Texas, they have a couple Border Patrol checkpoints. I would refuse the Border Patrol checkpoints just because, and I probably will for the rest of my life. The fact that they have U.S. government Border Patrol checkpoints in the United States border, and they're stopping me when constitutionally you have to have probable cause. And again, look how much time and energy this is wasted in my mind because I know all this because I was researching all of this and watching all the stupid videos on YouTube. Like, why do I know these things? It shouldn't matter. But the reality is these people exist on our country, uh, in our country. They wear a badge, they're in a uniform, and they think they're doing the right thing. But they're stopping U.S. citizens who have committed no crimes just to see, hey, do you have any people who aren't citizens in the car? But technically, they're not supposed to do that. That's the problem I have with it. But... At the same time, like literally within the same few days you have on the news, all these migrants coming over the border and you have Border Patrol letting them in because they were following orders from the federal government. Isn't that crazy, man? The people who are Border Patrol, supposed to be protecting the border, they are letting them in. It's, it's crazy. So here I am, I have to stop and give them information, but I'm a citizen, I have paperwork. I don't have to, so I refuse. And what that looks like is you just don't roll down your window. They'll knock on your window. They'll tell you, hey, open up your car. We need to see. No, you don't. Like, I just say no. This is what it looks like when you refuse. Mm -mm -mm -mm. No. So that's what I did. And you know what? I'll do it again. Because they're not in the right. <laughs> it's like, they're not in the right. But they think they are, which is crazy. Um, they're public servants. They're there to protect our country not harass citizens. And that's my opinion. So again, the point of this video is I'm letting all of this go. I'm done bucking this system. I'm done trying to fight it because the reality is me as an individual, it's not going to change it. Unless everybody steps up and decides we're all pissed off, we're all tired of this, then we might see some change. But until then, I'm just going to live freely the way I normally do. And uh, if a cop pulls me over, threatens to uh, make me pay extra taxes for whatever reason because he's got a gun on his hip, if I don't listen to him, he'll take me to jail. If I refuse to jail, or to go to jail, he will kill me. That's the reality. So until everybody's on the same page, I'm just gonna hang back, pay my bills, and uh, keep working towards living off grid because that's about all I can do. And uh, I don't know, let me know in the comments. What are your, what are your guys' experience with Border Patrol? What is your experience in the military? If you were a veteran, did you get out? Did you finish your contract? Um, let me know what you guys have in the comments. Maybe you'll make a video with the comments, but I just thought I'd go over that because this has been the last few months for me, uh, last year anyway, the last few months of last year, like November, or December, a little bit of this January. But uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think. I know it's kind of a different video. Um, yeah, super sorry to all the people personally that I've offended while they were on duty, you know, Border Patrol officers. You guys are probably cool. I know you guys are probably cool. But the second you put on that uniform and start enforcing bullcrap on me, it's fair game, dude. You're asking for it. 